A very good morning from Conus, Lithuania, where I'm starting today's video right where I finished the last one, in this beautiful park next to the bus station. Now we're going to jump on a bus today into the heart of the country to a small town that's got a Scottish connection. Now that sounds pretty intriguing to me, and if you'd like to tag along, well you're in the right place, let's go. This is a lovely bus station. If you watched my last video, you'll have seen that last night I was here doing a recce, but it was dark and I wasn't sure if this was the right place, but I think it is now. Um, and we'll just check the timetable, make sure everything's going as planned. Where are we? I think that's us there. Yeah, the 1040 to Kedanya. I'm not quite sure how to say it. There's a few wee like cafes and shops in here as well that you can pick up something to eat. A wee coffee maybe? That's what I need. Oh, in fact, there's a lot more along here. Aye, so you got a big supermarket as well, or you can even get your hair cut. The bus station here in Connors is a lovely big building, but it isn't exactly in the heart of town. I would say you're about half an hour's walk from the old town, so just bear that in mind if you're departing from here. And while I wouldn't exactly describe it as a sketchy part of town, it's the most real part of town I've seen so far, let's put it that way. I've had a nice breakfast this morning, but I'm still going to pick up a few emergency supplies here in the supermarket because I've got no idea about this town that we're going to today. Is it a big town? Is it very small? I've got no idea. Population, nothing. So it's best to have something, you know, be prepared. Look at that, a salami advent calendar. What will they think of next, eh? All the buses are just there behind me, all lined up ready to go and I'm going from platform 14 this morning at 10.40 which is in about 15 minutes. Now I've got my ticket already, I bought it online and for the one hour journey it costs €6.60 so I think that's pretty good value. That's our bus pulled up now, it's quite a nice big coach. Now when you book your tickets online, unfortunately you don't have a choice of where to sit. I've been given seat 5. We'll see where that is, we'll see how busy it is. I'll try and go on last and if there's a spare seat, I'll just grab that because I think we're getting off at the first stop anyway. So this will give me a good indication of where I can sit. Hello. For now at least I've managed to nab the front seat, let's just see if I can stay here.
Thank you. All right, folks, welcome to Cadenia. We've made it. Now, I was expecting this to be a small town and it appears to be more like a small city. But anyway, we're here. Now I just need to find where my hotel is and we'll go from there. I think my hotel's in kind of the old town, the smaller part. But yeah, we need to find it. Now, this is the cucumber capital of Lithuania. But we are not here for cucumbers, okay? Bloody hell, it's freezing here. Absolutely freezing. So much colder than Connus. Google Maps is telling me just to keep walking for about another half hour and I am glad to keep moving because it is so cold. I've got about four layers on under this jacket and it's not enough. Oh, there's some dark threatening clouds over there. This could be Scotland, couldn't it? Hi buddy, you're doing well, keep going. You see this could be, I don't know, Falkirk? What am I doing here? I still haven't explained the Scottish connection, but we'll get to that soon, okay? Now I must admit, this is what travel's all about, the excitement of arriving in a town that you know nothing about. In fact, I can't even say the name, but this is where we are. I'm gonna go with Kedanya. Now I'm not sure if this little dot on top of the E means that's where you stress it. Maybe it's Kedanya. And forget the last few letters, I don't know how to say that, but I'm going with Kedanya. Okay, I think I've found my hotel and what is that rolled up outside on the flagpole? I think that's a saltire, you know. Have we found our little bit of Scotland already? Right, let's see if I can drop my bag off at least for a wee while. Once again, hours before check-in, I just see if I can drop my bag. And they said, your room's ready. Bonus, eh? Hello. Right, second floor. Nope, this is the third floor. I think they use the American system of floors. How about that? Under 40 quid for the night. I would say that's a bargain. And I've even got my own nice wee bathroom. And I could almost have a bath in that shower tub. But as nice as this wee room is, no hanging about, just drop off the bag and we're going out to explore this wee town. Let's go. Cool hotel though, isn't it?
Now the first thing, come on, I've got to say, it's a Monday afternoon. It's quite a quiet wee place, isn't it? Okay, that's very random, isn't it? So unlike the last video in Connus, when I had four hours of daylight to explore the place, I've got about the same here, but I think it might be more than enough. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's not a nice place, but the kind of historic centre seems very small and there's not much on the outskirts, so aye, we should be able to see everything today. What an absolutely beautiful place and I like it, don't get me wrong, but it's just eerily quiet. I think I've seen about 10 people in the centre of town since I've been here. Although of course I don't speak a word of Lithuanian, I can kind of work out that this sign means we are in the very centre of the country, right here on the square. Now, before we start talking about Scottish people in Lithuania, did you know that in the late 19th century, a whole load of Lithuanians came across to Scotland? Now, that was mainly to escape the tyranny and poverty of the Russian Empire. But way before that, we're talking 17th and 18th centuries, this town here, 63% of the property here, was owned by Scots. That's hard to believe, isn't it? 63% of this, owned by Scottish people, here in deepest Lithuania. Now why is that, you might ask? Well, back in the day, Lithuania was a place of opportunity and prosperity, and migrants were offered things like civil rights, commercial opportunities and religious freedoms, and that attracted an older, more educated migrant. So all these influential, canny Scots came over and they made their way into the administration of the town. And eventually, the majority of the property here ended up in Scottish hands. It's quite incredible, isn't it? Now, of course, all this stuff happened hundreds of years ago, but my mission today is to see if I can still find something Scottish in the town. Now, we've already seen a salt tire on the flagpole outside the hotel, but I don't hold out much hope of finding anything else, to be honest. Although, is this maybe their tribute to Nessie? I tell you what, this looks a bit like the River Ness, doesn't it? No, I'm afraid not, Steve, that's a fail. I can't believe they've got this sign with all the place names in Germany, Poland, Estonia, Sweden. But there's not even one for Montrose. I'm just walking along the riverside now because I saw a sign for the old harbour. Now I think it used to be the harbour, it's not there anymore. But I have found an anchor. Tell you what, this is a lovely town. Hey, I wonder if there's something written in some old legal papers that I could still move here. We might not be part of Europe anymore, 
but maybe a Scotsman can move to Cadenia. Nah, I've followed the river round a bit, but I haven't found the site of the old harbour. It might not have been much anyway, but I just don't have time really to explore. It'll be dark in like about two and a half hours. Although the clouds over there, they look like rain. I'm amazed we haven't been rained on today, especially as we're in Scotland. I love these little stations in the park. Look, you've got free Wi-Fi, free air pump, SOS, free charging. Really cool idea, but it wouldn't last a week back home. Oh, a vending machine, hot drinks. Do you think it works? One euro, it's worth the risk, isn't it? Damn, that would have been good. Could go a hot drink. Former house of Jonas, oh, what's that? Former house of Jonas Arnetas. Right, that's quite interesting. I might be clutching at straws a bit, but if that house behind us is the former home of Jonas Arnetas, well, there used to be a lady called Sophia Arnett. Now, she was the daughter of a prominent Scottish businessman and she was married to George Bennett, who was a very important figure in this town. So I wonder if that was their old house. That could be complete rubbish, by the way. I've got no idea and I can't even find anyone to ask. Ah, yes, the house was referred to as masonry in 1661. It was constructed in the land 22 metres in width and approximately 40 metres in length by John Arnott in the 17th century. John Arnott, Scottish. Now, can I go in here? Only one way to find out. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Lithuanian. This drone. Oh, is it, this is Lithuanian design, yeah? Yeah, traditional. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and the thistles on the seats as well. Yes. It's uh, reminding me of home. <laughs> Exhibition from wool, all made from wool. All from wool. Yes, craft house, and uh, we have um, so a uh, uh, job and hobby after lesson. Okay. So girls made this beautiful, but now we have no teacher because he is older. So this basement, uh, this is authentic. That's incredible. So this is from 17th century? Yes, yes, 17th century, uh, about middle. Uh, where work, craft, man with wood. Oh, I love this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you maybe feel the wood, yes. Oh, this is a workshop. This is brilliant. So, where boys come? Here to, to make beautiful things from wood and uh, he made a spoon, Lithuanian traditional food. Come people or children, we have education lesson. So who come, we made this beautiful Lithuanian traditional spoon. Wonderful. Yes. 
So yes, that was John Arnott's house. It was so nice to see inside and the very kind lady was showing me around. Of course, a lot of it's been remodeled over the centuries, but there's so much authentic in there as well. And it was so cool to see the thistles on the furniture. That made it feel like home. Now, as well as being a museum, that was also a craft house. So I bought a couple of craft items that have been handmade in John Arnott's house. And I think these birds whistle. I'm still wandering about but I feel like I've failed a bit in my quest to find much Scottish here but what I have found is a very agreeable wee Lithuanian town and I'm really glad I came here but I guess that most stuff from like the 17th, 18th centuries you're not really going to find much evidence of it now are you? And that seems to be the case for me today. Ah there we go the first drops of rain there's nothing more authentic or Scottish than a bit of rain is there? Right, just looking at this sign at the town hall and it says in 1653 a Scot, Tom Chancellor, rented premises on the ground floor and opened one of the first pharmacies in Lithuania. There we go. That's a claim to fame, isn't it? I'm seeing all these cool buildings and courtyards but when I walk in, I just can't find any open doors or people. And as much as I want to try some of these doors and see if they open, what if that was someone's house? Now I must admit, a lot of these places don't look very inviting just to walk in, but this is certainly an old shop or the site of an old shop. And there's a sign on the wall. Now that is saying that it was operating from the end of the 17th century and was owned by a Scottish merchant fraternity who rented it. Now it was assumed that the Scottish Merchant Fraternity was established here on 7th of July 1731 so these dates sound about right and it was the first public company in Lithuania. There we go. Oh and look at the title, Former Scottish Tobacco Shop. Tobacco, of course it was, it was going to be that or alcohol wasn't it? I think it's time to be brave and go somewhere for lunch again. Nowhere's got menus, but deep breaths, here we go. Right, I've been very brave. I've made it inside, it looks quite nice. I've got a seat, I've got a menu that's got some English on it. It started well. Oh no, there's a robot bringing my drinks. Hi. Now, your guest, your move is ready. First, this is bizarre. Blue light on is your meal. Be careful when picking it up. Do you say thank you? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. See you later. How utterly bizarre is that? Right now for lunch I'm not being too adventurous, I've just ordered a burger but I've also ordered a gira, which is a traditional Lithuanian drink made from rye bread. Now I don't like rye bread so this is going to be interesting isn't it? Oh my god it's delicious. 
Where have you been all my life? And to think I'd got a Pepsi as backup as well, eh? Oh, here she comes again. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very kind. See you later. Hey, let's be honest, how good does that look? Seriously. Oof. I'll see you in a bit. What a fantastic place, that burger was amazing. And that whole thing with the two drinks only came to 16 euros. I mean, I could say the staff were a bit robotic, but you know I had to say that. But I think that's me, done. I am not gonna be eating anything else today. Well, we'll see about that. I guess with a wee bit of light left in the sky, I should take this opportunity to say thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed that. I didn't end up finding too much Scottish stuff, did I? But that goes to show that a fail isn't always, well, a fail. Tomorrow the journey continues when I take a train out to the coast first thing in the morning, and then I'm going to be jumping on a ferry, a very long ferry journey. Can you work out where that ferry's going? But anyway, that's for another day. Thanks for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Wow, I've got to be honest, I didn't even notice that. This bridge, it's made of wood.